Hi, this is Christine Reeve, and I am one of the co-authors of the book Taming the Data Monster, which is designed for teachers to give guidance and ideas and forms for taking data in the classroom. And today I want to show you how to complete the discrete trial form that we talk about in the book that self-graphs. Uh, there is a blank copy available through a link in the book if you purchase it. And I want to just show you how we use it because it is a little complicated. Um, first, you can see that I filled this one out. You have a blank one. You have it in Word format, so you should be able to complete it. But I've set this one up for motor imitation. Um, and so my month is November. My year is 2015. Um, my student is going to be Joe's student. Um, I am the primary instructor. Um, and so I'm going to choose which action I'm going to teach first. And I've written the steps in for discrete trial format that we use very frequently. So I'm going to use um, touch head as my first action. And I write that in under A. And then all I do is today I'm on step one. And on trial one, when I, when I said do this and showed touch head, he needed a prompt. And my scoring code is down here. And a plus is independent and X is incorrect, visual, verbal, positional. So you can also change it if you need to. But I needed, he needed a physical prompt and I was working on action A. So the top triangle is where I put my scoring code and the bottom triangle is where I write the letter that corresponds to the action that the student is using. On the second one, he still needed a physical prompt. Then he only needed a gestural prompt. Then he needed a gestural prompt. And let's say on the fifth trial, he got it correct. So that gives me five trials. I'm going to initial at the bottom if there's any questions about the data. I know that I've only asked about A, and he's done one out of five, so that's 20%. 20 uh, the only reason there are five are because that makes it easy to do the percentages. So I'm going to move to, say I come back the next day. I'm still on step one because I haven't met my mastery criteria yet. Um, but today he only needs, he gets the first one incorrect, but then he gets the next ones correct. So when he gets three in a row, I'm going to move on to step two because that is my mastery criteria, which is written into my program. So that just depends on how you do your discrete trials. Um, now, because I'm stopping step one, I'm going to stop in this column and I have three out of four. So that's 75%. So I'm just going to estimate that that would be here. Then I'm going to move to step two, and let's say I'm doing this on the same day. I just moved to a different column and put in the same date. Now I'm going to choose stamps feet. Um, so that's going to be number B. It's going to be B. So when I first present it, he gets it wrong, which is very common. Um, the next time I give him a physical prompt immediately. The next time he still needs a physical prompt. Then he needs a um, visual prompt. Excuse me. And the next time he gets it correct. So I put in my initials and that's one out of five so we're back at 20%. Now I can connect my step ones together to graph I'm going to draw a dotted line in between my steps so I know why his performance dropped so suddenly. And I'm not going to connect those lines so that when I analyze the data, it's going to be clear. And I should have said we're also working for popcorn on a fixed one-to-one. -one. Um, next time, I'm going to come back tomorrow. And we're going to continue with two. And this time, he needs a physical prompt. I'm working on B. And then he gets it right. So again, it's three out of four, so that's 75%, and I can connect those lines. Now it's time for me, because I have three consecutive trials right here, now it's time for me to move on to 
step three, and I'm gonna do that the next day. Step three is where I randomize those two, and that's where that lower box is gonna start looking different. So first it's, he gets it wrong when I give him A, because he's been doing B. I give him a physical prompt and we do A. And then I do B and he needs a physical prompt. And the next time he gets B correct. And the next time I prompt him immediately to do A. So again, he's got one out of five, so that's 20. And again, I'm gonna draw a dotted line um, to separate my steps. So we're gonna continue with step three. If I do more than five trials in a day, I just put it in different columns and put the shoot date in twice. I might do less than five trials in a day, in which case I just adjust my math. Um, it really depends on the student's engagement the way that I do trials. Um, so let's say we continue with that. Now that we've covered most of the components, I'm gonna speed it up so you can see how it looks once you get data filled into it. Hopefully this gives you a good idea of what the data sheet will look like when it's all filled in. There's a place I'm filling in now for comments that might affect the data. And there's also a place for reinforcers and the reinforcer schedule so that you can see how that was implemented if you're not the one taking the data. Thank you for watching. This is Christine Ree with Autism Classroom Resources.